fishing. Even when you're in the mood, let's go fishing. Well, it's just me and you. Head on down to the fishing hole. Grab your hat, get your pole. Let's go fishing. When you're in the mood. Canadian Sport Fishing, brought to you in part by Rapala, premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Crown, protect, maintain, save. Ray Marine Electronics, Ray Marine, simply superior. Fast Fender, the easiest way to attach and adjust your fender. Easy Docker, docking made easy. I've got Benjamin Rubini behind me. I've got Tracy Hiddle in front of me. We're just having a blast. We're here at Kitimat Lodge. Perfect release. Every time we go to British Columbia, it's an adventure. And this week, we're at Kitimat Lodge. But I got to tell you, I tell the people that join us, because we have up to like 14 people join us on our trip, that it's commando fishing. It's getting up early, sometimes at 4 or 5 AM, because we have to have time to get suited up with waders and all our gear and get our rods, reels, lines, everything ready. We go even before it gets light into the dining room where they have everything ready for us to have a quick breakfast. So we'll have toast and uh, you know, we'll have some fresh fruit or cereal. We get all our stuff packed together and then it's off. It's either driving to a location where we're gonna be fishing from shore or driving down to the marina, going out in Douglas Channel and then going by jet boat to a secluded river and finding a place that's full of fish. There he goes, they followed it right in. There's a coho and just off. Still very aggressive, big male, big humpy, and away you go. What a gorgeous fish. Whenever I plan a BC river trip, I try to go to the Terrace or the Kitimat BC area. It's about 800 miles north of Vancouver. And I try to time it sometime in August, close to the end of August, when there's three species of salmon in the river that I like to fish for. The first one are the chromers. It's the coho salmon. They're the ones that are like silver bullets. They fight hard, they strike well. The other one is the humpy. It's the pink salmon, especially the males that have the hump back. They're also very aggressive. They look beautiful. And then the third one is the chum salmon. It looks like a tiger with the big water marks and big teeth. You'll be casting a lure or you'll be casting a spoon or a hair jig or drifting on artificial with your drift rod and you don't know which one you're gonna get. And some of the chum salmon can be over 20 pounds. Talk about excitement. It's like either every cast or every second cast, we're hooking into a fish. So Tracy, is this normal on this system? Well, this system does have a, a very healthy fishery. A number of chum salmon come in here to spawn, a number of pink salmon, and uh, this month here is uh, the time for the fresh cohos to come in, and that's usually when we start bringing clientele into these remote tide rivers. And when those hot cohos start coming in, they're uh, quite aggressive. And as you guys have been seeing, you know, you're, we're catching them almost every cast. Closed captioning is brought to you by K100. We make water burn. Good job. Yeah, you just switch your tactics. And on the retrieve, this coho just crushed this spoon. Is there a mix? You know, I hear about these northern cohos. Well, the northerns will come later. Or is that a steelhead? No, that's a coho. Man. Let's see, he's a freshie. Right. That is a thick fish. What a gorgeous fish. You went to a lure. I switched to a lure. Yeah, you didn't say nothing. Well, I was over there. Casting. I, was, I was only going to mention it if you caught that's one. That's my you know? favorite spoon. It's called a coho spoon. <laughs> you know, I tell a lot of steelheaders that if they can get into fresh cohos, I think they're as much fun or funner than getting steelhead. Well, they're a lot more abundant. No, but also, I, I just think they have a ton of energy. Like, look at this fish. Yeah, I'm gonna have to just bring them into the shallows okay. here. I'll just follow you, okay? For moral support. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to get I don't want to get blamed there. for losing it, okay? There we go. We'll okay, just... now do you want me to hold the rod? Yeah, for sure. five minutes from now. And okay, let's do that. Don't lose them. Okay, so the hook's out. Yeah. And we don't want to leave them too long away. We want to let them go and see their 
quite aggressive. Perfect. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. I love to drift fish with a center pin, and here in BC, rivers are wide and fish can be anywhere. In some cases, long casts up to 100 feet are needed to get out to the main runs. The fish can be anywhere, so when casting and drifting, I try and methodically cover entire runs before moving up and down the run. The main advantage of using a center pin is that it enables your lure to drift by a fish at the same speed as the current. I focus so hard on my float and anticipate it going under that I almost get a headache. And as usual, when you least expect it, it goes under and the real action starts. You know, there's three of us fishing this uh, one run and we're having non-stop action. Silver cohos, we're getting pinks. This is another nice pink. It's nice when you can just get them casting artificials. I'm gonna start drifting in a second, just to see if I can get some to hit a blade bait or to hit uh, some spawn. They are so much fun on light gear. You know, I'm playing around with these new Lure Jensen outfits. This is the Lure Jensen, it's a salmon steelhead rod. This is their medium action, and it's ideal. I'm sure that even the Great Lakes salmon and trout fishermen would really enjoy using this outfit, you know, casting, but it's really been designed for coastal fishing out here in BC, because there's so many salmon and steelhead out here. Look at it. Gorgeous fish. Come on. You know, we get anxious sometimes as fishermen. We want to hook a fish, then when we hook a fish, we want to bring it in really quick. I, I just try to enjoy every moment. You can see this pink hasn't been in the river too long. It's got nice water marks. What a way to spend a day out here in BC. It's amazing. Okay, there. Look at gorgeous fish. Look how beautiful he is. Nice water marks. He's gonna pop that jig out of his mouth. It's what I use a barbless hooks. So it's not big, but look. Isn't that nice? I love fishing. Look at this. I'm move my hands away. There he goes. Look at him. He goes freedom. Yes. Yeah, see how they blend in with the bottom, even in this clear water? Now look, here's the jig I caught it on. This is actually one of the jigs by Lure Jensen, and it's called a twitching jig. So they've developed them for the West Coast, but also for Ontario. So it's a combination of marabou, that's this pink stuff, and then also there's a little sliver here, a strip of rabbit fur. So look when I put it in the water. Look at how nice that looks. If I move it up and down, look. So what we're doing is just swimming these things. We're not jigging them on the bottom. We're swimming them across the surface. Um, anywhere from about a foot below the surface down to about a foot off bottom. So they are very tantalizing. And because we're using like three eighths and half ounce, it's really easy to cast. And as soon as you feel anything, because we're swimming it through the water column, you set the hook. So it's nice to be able to test gear that has actually been developed to fish out here. I'm just thankful for Rapala because they, they uh, have so many companies, and one of them is Lure Jensen, that make specific gear for different fishing conditions right across the country. Let's see if I can get another one. On this trip, we had about 12 anglers join us who have never experienced river fishing in BC. One of them is our good friend, Joe Kubasik, who was upstream and hooked into a big fish on his float drift outfit. Joe was fighting this fish for several minutes before Tracy went up to take some photos of him in case he lost the fish. You could see he was fighting a big fish as he planted the drift rod butt into his legs and put his center pin reel to work. The water is so clear in BC that when the fish started swimming into the shallow water, we could see its beautiful colors. It was a big male chum salmon with full watermark colors. As it was swimming from side to side, you could see the white sides of the inside of its mouth and its big snout. These fish have so much power that it would have been tough landing it in deeper water. So Joe decided to bring it into the shallows for Tracy to tail it. This gorgeous fish inhaled the pink hoochie Joe was drifting. No problem though, the barbless hook was easily removed. The fish was led to deeper water and it took off immediately. Way to go, Joe! Yeah, so what I did here is um, just changing tactics here. I've been using a, a pink jig. It seems to be quite popular here in the north and in BC in general. And I uh, just switched to a spoon. These uh, cohos are quite aggressive. They're uh, all tidal fish. So it does got uh, an imitation of a herring or an anchovy from the sea. 
So uh, let's just see how they work. Whoa! Oh, ho, 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 ho. Just beautiful, fresh, fresh fish. Yeah, a lot of times the coho will get so aggressive they'll flip into the line. So you call it the coho roll. He bit that one right on the tongue and it won't take much and this thing here will go like nothing. No need to revive the fish in this river. They are completely hot and they are chrome bars of silver. Raymarine Electronics. Raymarine, simply superior. You know, when you're uh, working a river that we have, and you're using jet boats, and then you're walking to get to spots, you try to pack light, but look at all the gear. We got our nook cases there and stuff, our flambeau packs and everything, a whole bunch of rods. Uh, you try to pack light, but a lot of times you gotta haul gear. So a lot of times we'll have like a home base. We'll leave our gear in one spot, and then we'll just work a section up and down and then move, you know, and set up camp somewhere else. I just want to tell you that when it comes from fishing rivers and drift fishing, whether you're fishing the Great Lakes or you have the privilege of coming out on North America's west coast, drift fishing is one of the most exciting ways to catch them. Now what I'm holding up is really a classic drift outfit. This rod is 11 and a half feet long. It's called the Legacy. It's made by Lure Jensen. And this is a Lure Jensen center pin reel. So the reason this is called a drift reel, I'm just going to undo it here so that it uh, allows the line to go out. When uh, you're letting the float go down, because most of the time you use a float system, um, the reel is so smooth that it lets line out at current speed. So you can see here how even just the weight of the float that I have on there, if I take my hand off and watch how it spins. So that's why it's called a center pin. And it's ideal when you're casting out and letting your, the presentation go downstream. And you can see behind me, this is the run that we've been fishing most of the day. I'm gonna say, it's probably two or three football fields long. So by using a center pin outfit, you can really cover the water from one end to the other, close to you, and also out further. And you'd be surprised how well you can cast with it. Once you learn how to cast with a center pin, there was no problem by standing in the water about 50 feet and casting almost 200 feet to the other side where the deeper water is. Because most drift rods are long, you get a lot of torque even with light line. And it also helps to keep your line directly going down to the float and also to mend the line. Sometimes when the current takes your line ahead of your float, because the whole idea is to have as direct a line as possible so that when that float goes under, you can set the hook and get a fish on. You know, I remember back probably in the early 90s, it was the first time fishing in Northern British Columbia on the rivers with Noel Geiger. We used to be the president of the BC um, River Guide Association. And uh, he would guide us fishing. And I remember him tying on a hair jig, some marabou, some bucktail, usually purple or pink in color. And it was really heavy, about five eighth ounce. And we were only fishing water that was about maybe seven to eight feet deep, pretty fast runs. And I thought that we'd be fishing the jigs like you do for a walleye, you know, back in Ontario. He said, no, 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 you cast the jig out, as soon as it hit the water, you literally swim it through the water column. So it's swimming like this. It's not going down to the bottom. So the jigging technique that works in BC is much different than the jigging technique that we use in fresh water for all the different warm water species of fish, even lake trout in cold water. You cast it out and as soon as it hits the water, you start moving your rod up and down so that that jig has the up and down action and you reel in the line at the same time. It looks like something that's swimming. Hot pink or natural pink are the number one colors. Number one and number two, I would say. And when a fish hits, they smash it. You better hold on. There he is. Wow. What a missile. Talk about energy. We've been hooking cohos, pinks. Might be able to grab it by the tail here. I don't know. Let's see. Look at that big stripe. 
Oh, oh, got off. It's okay. You know, I'm using a float rig. This is the, the new Legacy. It's actually a float drift rod, and it's made by Lure Jensen. And this one is rated as perfect for the West Coast because it's rated like 8 to 17 pound test. And I've got 14 pound on there, which is a really good, a really good weight of line to have on there. And I'm using one of these clear drift floats. See, it's clear, so the fish don't see it. And it's got that chartreuse top, so it's nice and bright. And this is what I call a, a hollow core sinker. So the line goes right through the sinker so that when I'm casting, it makes it a lot easier because everything falls down. The float goes down to the sinker, the swivel stops it. And then I have my bobber stop up there. That's a little piece of, uh, uh, it's like braided line, if you will. And then I've got a, uh, this is about an number two. It's called an octopus hook. So this is my setup and I'm gonna take another row bag. Man, that fish went nuts when I hooked it. I had my hands full. I thought it was gonna come right at me. So there's my row. It's gonna grab one of the bags, tag it on there. You don't wanna get this juice all over because when it hardens, it's all oil and it can be really messy. So we've got it in a nice sealed container. But I'm gonna show you how we thread it on here. And I'm just, you know, I'm talking to you and I'm looking around and I'm looking at that snow-capped ridge up there. So beautiful. So what I'm doing is just going along the outside edge. So I'm not going right through the middle. I want to keep most of the eggs intact, but I'm piercing some along the edge. And I want the sack to kind of go with the circumference of the hook. So I want it to be kind of like that. So see, I don't know, that's as much as I can conceal it. So there it is there. So that's what we're using. It looks so yummy. No, I better save it for the fish. I'm not gonna take a bite, okay? So let's see if I can hook another one there. That water's cold, let me tell you, refreshing. I think the highlight of every trip to Kitimat Lodge is their jet boat experience. But you know what? It takes a lot out of you. So what I mean by jet boat experience is you get up early in the morning, have a fast breakfast, you drive about 15, 20 minutes to their marina, you go into a large boat that takes you, sometimes I'm gonna say 20 minutes to half an hour up Douglas Channel where they beach those boats and there's jet boats ready. You take all your gear, go in those jet boats, and then the action begins. You go up this river at about 30 miles an hour and the river's narrow and there are boulders and there's wood and you're going all over the place. I'm telling you, it's such an adrenaline rush before you ever get to the pools that are full of fish. So it's the jet boat fishing that I really love in British Columbia. Rod Runner Canada, grab and go fishing. On some of the trips that we've taken to BC, we've actually uh, gone off-roading and we've used ATVs, which is a blast, to get to really remote rivers that you can't access even by truck. So you'll drive sometimes an hour or two to get to a location with ATVs, then you hop onto the ATVs and you truck through trails and stuff to get to rivers that are literally untouched. And most of the time they're full of fish. You know, when it comes to drift fishing, most people will use the float to suspend their bait at the right depth so it's presented in front of the fish. This float is made by clear drift, and you can see that it's a slip bobber, so the float slides um, up and down the line. The key is, when you're using any size of float, is to match the float with the right amount of weight so that the float is uh, floating properly at what we call neutral buoyancy. So in this case, it would be just below where it's painted on top. These are a little bit large because when you're fishing on Canada's west coast especially, um, you're dealing with big waters. So you can see these eggs. Some of them are almost transparent and translucent. Some of them have a little eye, different colors. So in some cases, the darker colors work well, like the reds and so on. And then there's also clusters. You can see the clusters that are here. You know, after a full day's fishing, jet boats, going up a remote river, catching lots of fish and keeping a few fresh coho salmon, it's time to enjoy them. So you have to literally haul your catches from the marina back to the lodge, 
clean the fish. And what we did on this trip, before we actually went up the river on the jet boats, we set some crab traps. And we had a whole pile of fresh Dungeness crabs for have for dinner. And guess who was our chef, our crab chef? It was Tracy Hiddle. He prepared all the crabs, steamed them all up. Michael Kumar, who was one of the guests on the trip, he was the chef that did the salmon with pecans and all kinds of stuff, butter and maple syrup. And we also had beautiful steaks that were done on the grill. So I know you probably feel bad for us when we're fishing all day and we get sore wrists, but I'll tell you what, when it comes to eating and you've got fresh seafood, steaks and fish, that makes the whole trip just amazing. You know, one of the most productive ways to catch different species of salmon on the BC coast is to fish a jig. But you don't fish a jig the way we do inland for like walleye, bass, and pike. The jig is actually swam through the water column. So these are special jigs. They're made by Lure Jensen, and they're called twitching jigs. You can see that the shape of the head is round, but it's flat on both sides, and it has a really big eye. What I like about these jigs is that there's one strip of rabbit fur out the back, and then there's a lot of marabou, which makes the jig look really lifelike. It may not look like much in my hand, but when this is going through the water, it looks really good. So let me show you. What I'm gonna do is just cast it out. So this is a narrow run, it's not too deep. Letting it sink a little bit, but what I do is I lift it and I jig on the way down. So what you've actually got is a swimming action that goes like this. Look at how gorgeous this coho is. Big kipe. What a chunky fish. Got the size of this guy's head. I don't know if I can land him out here. I'm gonna try on the bar. You wouldn't believe this. I just cast my jig out to see how it would look in about two feet of water. And this fish came out from about 10, 15 feet away and just grabbed it. Look, gorgeous. Look at those spots on its back. Okay, I'm gonna to try to bring it in here. Oh, wow, that's a trophy. Okay, there, look, one more look. You know what, this is gonna be my souvenir from BC. This is a perfect fish to take home. Isn't that gorgeous? Right here from Kitimat Lodge. Okay, now I just have to walk it back to shore. Canadian Sport Fishing, brought to you in part by Rapala, premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Crown, protect, maintain, save. Raymarine Electronics, Raymarine, simply superior. Fast Fender, the easiest way to attach and adjust your fender. Easy Docker, docking made easy. So this is a narrow run, it's not too deep. Letting it sink a little bit, but what I do is I lift it and I jig on the way down. So what you've actually got is a swimming action that goes like this. So when the fish usually hit is when the jig is dropping. 